you know, there's that famous um, in, in the in the in the manner he says, "Well, so your brother has harmed you. There are two handles. Mm. One, he's an asshole. He's terrible. <laughs> second hand, second handle, he's your brother." Mm-hmm. Um, I found that immensely comforting as as a father, and I'm not a perfect father, and and I do get cross with my kids more than I'd like to get cross with them. I'm not perfect, but what I I have found really comforting and orienting is that two handles. My five-year-old is having a tantrum. One handle. He's a little shit. He's doing it again. <laughs> when is he? When is he going to stop? Why is this happening? Do other parents experience this? Other handle. He's my kid. Yeah. Um, and that's a really calming thought. It's somehow a really calming thought. So I'm his dad. Yeah. So. I'm going to, I've got to be, I've got to be on duty. Yeah. I've got to be there for him. Um, yeah. And when he calms down, we're going to have to try and work out strategies to make it better. Yeah. yeah. And, and when that's, you realize that it's a duty, that. right, then you can yeah, say, yeah, yeah. well, it's not about getting angry like, like I would with an asshole, right? Like it's yeah. about what does a father do? What is like That's define? Right, yeah. What is my role as a father? My role as a father yeah. is to not get angry at him for doing this thing, but to allow him to be in a, in, in an environment where he can learn what the right thing to do is. That's right. And, yeah. and so that's not going to be yelling at him. That's going to be talking to him and saying, listen, you know, like, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to tell you how to father, but cause I'm not a father, but you know, like yeah, there's, there's a way to, to perform each role to the best of your abilities. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is comforting just to, it is comforting and it's strengthening just to step back from the impulse to be angry and just say, okay, well, I missed that. So it behooves me to uh, take a deep breath, to, to let this go until he's calm enough. And then to try and do something that's positive, but also just the, the sense, you know, I mean, I think, you know, we live in this society where um, we are encouraged to think of ourselves as very flexible and we can recreate ourselves. And I think it is important with something as important as eternity and so on to sort of have a sense of duty. Like I, I, I do think that's, it's, it's calming, it's reassuring, it's orienting. There is no out clause. You know, I don't think as a father, there shouldn't be even the possibility. It's your duty. I think Epicurus is spot on about that. Um, mm. So, again, it's that whatever happens, I'm going to be there. That, that mm. I, I, again, I found really quite calming and empowering. And no matter if he has a really bad day, we're going to get up. And tomorrow we're going to try and make a better day. Um, yeah. and we're just going to keep doing that until I get so old that he can look after me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Um, and there's no, and seriously, yeah. the best examples that I've seen of fathers are those people, you know, and even, even my own father, you know, it's, it's when, when, when you mess up, they're there for you in a really important way. They're there for you to, to get advice from, to, to say, well, you know, what, what is the best way that I can navigate this? Cause I look up to you and, and they're also there in a powerful way that says like, uh, you know, listen, I've lived life. I can tell you something very important about what you're doing right now. So you've got to listen, right? Like I, I know that it seems from your perspective, like what I'm about to say is not going to be helpful, but I promise you it will be. And if you respect my opinion enough, like, like this could be good for you. And, um, you know, I, I really do. I, I love that kind of aspect of stoicism of, of whatever your duty is, do it to the best of your abilities. And I had an experience recently where somebody uh, emailed me and asked for some advice. They were dealing with an extremely difficult personal uh, decision, one that would affect the rest of their life. And I essentially said, listen, I think the way that the Stoics would look at this is you're going to make a decision one way or the other. That's not for me to say. That's only for you to say, right? But what I can say is once you've made that decision, own it 100%, right? Yeah. If you go mm-hmm. that way, own it and never look back. Never get resentful that you made that decision. Just go 100% to that duty that you have now. And if you make the other decision, do exactly the same thing. Never look back. Never have resentment that you've made that choice. Just do your duty, just in the same yeah. way that a father should never look back and say, oh, you know, what could I mean, my life have been if I yeah. didn't have kids? You know, yeah. like, no, you're a father now. Forget about that. 
do your yeah. duty to the best of your ability. And that truly is, and you could probably speak to this, that's a true path to meaning in life, right? Like just accepting that this is what I need to do now. There's a gravity that comes from just being in a situation, as you say, of duty. Um, I've certainly found, I've felt like a, a more substantial human being since I've had kids. Um, and, and stoicism has helped in particular, as I say, just those fragments on duty didn't mean so much to me before I had kids. You know, I just didn't have those kind of responsibilities. Um, but definitely, um, there's a kind of, it, it's hard to put your finger on, but it, I mean, I use this metaphor of gravity or weight or something. There's something orienting about just no matter what happens, that kind of, it's like that reserve clause, you know. And I'm not mm. saying that that's going to happen. Um, kids are going to deal with bullying. Social media is going to make things very difficult, I imagine, for us in three or four mm. years. When you get to sort of year nine and year ten and the kids start bringing their iPhones to work and they're all on Facebook all the time. And, um, so it's going to be all of that. But one thing I know is I'm going to do my darndest to be there all the time. Yeah. And that... Social media may happen, bullies may happen, my kids may have, you know, bad relationships and go through difficult times. If you can just, if you have that inner certainty, okay, well, I'm just going to make a commitment here. Mm. That, that, that can be really clarifying. It makes life simpler. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, and, and again, there's this idea that stoicism makes you very, very inflexible, you know, because you are committing to a philosophy. I, I don't know about that. I think that... It's, it's, it's a way of balancing flexibility and flexibility. There's some stuff I'm not going to compromise on, and that frees me up. Yeah. All that indifferent stuff, I'm really flexible on because yeah. I know that it, it might not go my way, you know? So again, there's another image I found that students have, you know, stoicism is very, be very inflexible and very stern and very strict and stuff. And I don't know whether that's, that's spot on either because that whole idea that external stuff is out of your control and, and indifferent, I, I actually think it really frees you up. It's, mm. Because my, my, I'm not unconditionally committed to a certain outcome, yeah, I'm I'm a bit more fle- a bit more flexible. Maybe we can do it a different way. For example, whether if yeah. I was unconditionally committed, then you know, anxiety, stress, yeah, 